Okay, after we decided to cl declare independence, we had to set up a new government. Uh, the first order of business was defending the nation, or actually to conduct the revolution. Um, and to do this, the colonists had to think about how they wanted to set this up. And they had a few different requirements. First, they wanted a government that had enough power to do its job. However, they didn't want to grant uh, any groups or individuals too much power. Why do you think they wanted to, to set this up this way? Right. Well, we had just overthrown the British, uh, a tyrannical, oppressive government. Uh, naturally, you're going to want to set up something that's a complete opposite. So. Yeah, so they, they sided on a weaker government, um, but one that could still do its job regarding uh, the Revolutionary War. And they also wanted to protect state power, okay? So they wanted to keep the power of the states, they wanted to keep that individuality and that sovereignty, uh, and especially protecting individual rights and liberties. They just had the intolerable acts, as they, right. they called them. They wanted to keep government out of citizens' lives, keep those protections there when they needed it, but a less intrusive government. The first national government that we had is called the Articles of Confederation. Uh, first written in 1777 and really lasts us through the 1780s up until we write the Constitution in 1787. So um, why don't we take a look at what was within this firm league of friendship, as it was called, uh, between the 13 states. Okay, so speaking of this firm league of friendship, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> uh, well, in general, confederation is different than what we see as our federal government now. Uh, it's a it's a group of individual entities together for a purpose. The purpose then was to set up a first government and to defend themselves against uh, England or to revolt against England. But in this system, all independent states still have their sovereignty. Uh, all that sovereignty isn't collected into one national government. Correct. So what would be a modern example of that? example of a modern confederation would be something like the European Union. Now, uh, really coming together uh, largely for purposes uh, of economic policy, um, but also uh, some, some defense purposes as well. So even though these are separate countries, they are coming together for a common purpose, either uh, to share a common currency, maybe some trade purposes, and, and also defense. Okay, and like the Articles of Confederation, the European Union is having some issues as well, trying Correct. to manage who has the power and who does what and, and what role each individual nation has for the greater good of all of them. Correct. Okay, so some basics of the Articles of Confederation. First, they had a Congress of the Confederation that had representatives from each state, uh, but that was the only branch. There was no executive branch, there was no judicial branch, so there was no modern presidency or court system that we would know of today. It was just a Congress. And in that Congress, each state had one vote, which we'll get to in a second. That was a little problematic because some states were much bigger and more influential than other states. However, each one got the same number of votes in that Congress. Every state retained their power and independence in almost all matters. Congress could create a military to defend against foreign invasion. I mean, you know, we got to think the number one priority at this time uh, had uh, just fought a war with the British. Um, when we're in the 1780s, you know, it's a very real likelihood that uh, another foreign attack could happen. And so in that sense, uh, trying to have some sort of protection uh, was, was definitely important to defend against a foreign invasion. Okay, there were some major drawbacks of this. The first is that Congress had no power to enforce its laws. So they could write anything they wanted, but with no executive branch, they were really at the whim of the states just to voluntarily go along with these laws. We kind of know throughout history, whenever you have a system like that, people aren't going to do it. Um, or at least when it comes to the pocketbook, they're not going to because they couldn't tax. Right, so how are they going to raise a military if they couldn't raise any taxes to fund it? So how would they even try to get the money in the articles? Well, as it said, it was up to the states to collect revenue. And I think we saw from our class simulation that any time a vote came up or a resolution to tax uh, either imports or exports, uh, because the states could voluntarily decide whether they wanted to pay taxes or not, and most of the time those, those resolutions failed mm -hmm. uh, because states weren't willing to tax their own citizens. And so this was problematic. But another problem that compounded everything is they couldn't be changed you couldn't change the Articles of Confederation themselves to fix this tax issue uh, unless every state agreed to it. So to get all 13 states to agree on anything at that time, because they were so vastly different as communities and, and uh, as, as states, their characteristics, it, nothing could get done. Well, how were some of these problems within the Articles of Confederation solved in a new national government when we take a look at state representation? Okay, so 
the first plan to try to fix this idea of representation was the Virginia plan. And what Virginia said is we're going to create two chambers and that each chamber is going to have votes based on population. So the bigger states would have more representation in Congress uh, and more power. And they thought that this was fair because if more people live in the bigger states, that that state should have more power in the new Congress. The problem is to get this new constitution passed, you're going to need the support of the smaller states. Smaller states had their own plan, the New Jersey plan. Uh, the idea, kind of similar to the Articles of Confederation, where each state would get one vote. You know, that way Rhode Island, Delaware, New Jersey has the same voting power as some of the powerhouses like New York, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Um, this idea of equality uh, we still see in something like the New Jersey plan. So they decided to come up with a great compromise, or what I think it was called the Connecticut Compromise as yes. well, right? It was Sherman. Correct. So Roger Sherman Correct. came up with this compromise and said, all right, let's split up Congress into two different houses. One of them is going to be the Senate, which is like the New Jersey plan, uh, where you have two representatives per state. It's based on equality. Small states like that still do. Uh, House of Representatives that were based on the population so that the bigger states would have more. So for instance, Rhode Island only has two representatives in the House today. California has something like 35. Okay, so that was definitely favoring the larger states. And then they split up the powers between the two. Not perfect for every situation, but it did settle that, that contentious issue at the time at least on how representation was going to be uh, uh, conducted. Additionally, if you think about the articles, one branch, a Congress, no president and no judicial branch. Well, how was this resolved in the new national government under the U.S. Constitution? This idea of separation of powers, you divide the power of government into three different branches. This goes back to our first unit on how to prevent the abuse of power, uh, but also to make government a little bit more efficient, have an executive branch that can carry out and enforce those laws. You have a judicial branch to help interpret laws or um, uh, to settle disputes and then of course your legislative branch which ha has existed in those state governments at the time in the articles uh, to make laws and vote on matters of public importance. Okay, so that's just a small glimpse of, of two different ways that the Constitution settled these problems with the Articles of Confederation. I will take a closer look at that in the next unit when we talk about the Constitution in more depth.